right so this is going to be another Argo episode I reckon I'm not real good at these intros but um, this mystery box showed up today and I think I know what it's about I yes it definitely is okay this is a solenoid now this is probably going to mean that I can get to actually wire up the winch with a remote control unit which I'll grab down in a minute this is a 12 volt solenoid this takes the place of two or four relays. I think four relays is what I was going to have to do. Four horn relays to get two double pole switches so that I could swap the polarity of the winch control with only two wires or three wires. This does the whole lot in one unit, so um, much better designed. So uh, let's grab the remote control unit and we'll test fit this recall in the last episode or if you don't you can probably go back I've been adding these to a playlist um, and find the previous episode to this where I fitted a winch control or winch to the Argo including all the mounting points this is going to be the winch controller which a lot of people get really confused about so we have this little box here the green wire here is the antenna and our red wire is positive and our black wire is negative and the yellow and white wire are forward and reverse. So let's make this real simple for you guys. We'll hook forward up to one direction and we're going to hook reverse up to the other direction. And then conveniently we have a little loop of wire here, a little ring connector that's going to go on that terminal and it's a little bit too small for the connector. But we'll give that a bit of a trim and we'll put that on there. So we're going to take a pair of cutters and a pair of pliers. Now, I know a lot of my stuff comes across as a how-to video. It's not really what it's intended to be. It's a more of a, this is how I do stuff video. So I'm going to take a spring washer off. Just double check that that doesn't indeed still fit and we'll bring the camera angle around a bit better. This is a cheap trick I use a lot for these uh, ring terminals. And it's not necessarily recommended, but this is also not a heavy current carrying connector. Wow, that sort of almost made a rhyme of some kind. I'm just bending the shit out of this. You know what? I'm just going to chop the other half of that off. And that should be wide enough to sort of jam on that terminal. Again, a bit jerry built, but we'll be right. Now, I will be connecting the main negative uh, on a heavy wire to this terminal as well. Um, but for the moment, we just want to test this thing's function. So there we go. We have our common negative. Oh, let's move it so we get a better angle here. The common negative on that terminal are now forward and reverse connections. Now we have a couple of remote controls to run this. So let's hook up our test supply and see if this works. It's at this point I was going to use a clip lead and just clip straight into my little junction box up the side here. But I decided I'd finally get around to making myself a set of clips on one of these little things. And actually do the job properly. So I've got myself some OFC cable. I'm going to cut up a clip lead and um, I'm going to make myself a proper set of test leads. Um, it's probably a bit boring to watch. But if we're doing electronic-y stuff you might be interested. So uh, push my automatic wire strippers up, which I think these things are magic, by the way. Um, not always for OFC, but certainly they make life much easier. All right. I'm going to get all this tinned and get these made up, and then we'll demonstrate this winch controller. All right. I've got our little adapter finished here with our plus and minus marked. And we're going to uh, swing our camera up here. I'm going to plug into this and oh, turn our electric curtains off and give ourselves voltage, which is 13.5. A little higher than 12, but that's coming off a solar system. So let's hook our plus up to our red wire and our minus up to our little spade terminal here. Okay, we should be hooked up. Let's arm one of our remotes and see what happens. Okay. Okay. That's good, I'm hearing click one direction. 
and then a click in the other direction. Okay, that's good. You know what? I wonder what happens if I push both directions at once. <laughs> okay. That's smarter than that. It won't. <laughs> it's not physically capable with this system to uh, put both directions at once. Um, because there is a mechanical linkage in here that can only exist in one state. But, that's good. It's going to be easy. Geez, that pulls a bit of current though. So we're pulling, let's hold this down, 2.7 amps. I'll show you how I'm finding that out. I'm over looking at my house battery meter here, and let's click it on. So 2.6 or 2.7 amps. Um, probably a little bit less if I turn off my desk lights. Yeah, so about 2 amp. That's still not too bad for something that's likely to carry about 50 amps. So we'll disable that remote. Cool. That's nice. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty well right. I think I'll have to work out where the positive goes in. I think positive and negative go in here, and it will swap the polarity on those two out. Um, I'm going to have to look it up again, but I'm pretty sure that should be marked. No, it's not. I will make an assumption, wire it up that way, and then blow something up. So, rather than make an assumption, because I haven't wired exactly this unit before, um, I'm going to go look it up. Alright, well, some bits and bobs have arrived for this solenoid. Um, I'll actually get out and see the actual Argo soon enough. Um, but let's have a look at what we've got today. We've got some terminals, which I'm going to open here. Hopefully they're the right size. Looks like they're going to be the right size, and these are good solder ones. Um, I do have the good compression crimper to do these, uh, but I like to solder them, especially when water's involved. Um, and I've got plenty enough to do that job. Um, I got myself a big giant fuse holder here. Um, these are... I would say AG3, but they're not. AG3s are a glass fuse. These are an oversized blade fuse. This one's a 50 amp job. Um, hopefully, yeah, it actually says 50 amp on the top. <clears throat> hopefully that's enough to not blow when I run the winch under a bit of load, but I guess we'll see. <clears throat> I can always put a bigger one in there. Um, this guy is going to need some terminals on it, so we might fit them on this one. And I think they probably will with that. <coughs> and then uh, what I'm probably going to do is go and get uh, the winch controller itself. Start chopping some leads to length. Um, and we'll work out the rest of the wiring and the lengths. And make some bespoke wiring to exactly the right length. Um, also what I've got for the outboard motor project here is a couple of um, uh, Anderson plugs here. So that I can make a quick connect for the boat motor. But that'll be probably a different video at this stage. <clears throat> anyway, um, what I might do here is get some of this uh, wiring prepped. <clears throat> <clears throat> I need a drink. I've got a dry throat. It's been a long day. All right, we'll get some of these stripped back and we'll reach over the back here and turn on the good soldering iron. And we'll get rid of some of the extra rubbish off the desk here. All right, let's get in position to do some soldering. All right, so we're gonna get some solder here, which is just pretty much standard 60-40 tin lead. Um, but because there's lead in it, we're gonna bring an extraction fan over here. And it is a bit noisy, um, as you can probably hear. I've gotta do some work on that. Now, normally I do this pretty well off the cuff without too much hesitation, but uh, we're gonna move our camera in and have a closer look at what I'm doing here. Uh, this one, these bigger terminals usually require a little bit of planning, which is going to require a marker. So we're going to get a marker here and a big blob of pre-loved blue tack. So from here, I'm going to put a little bit of a mark right about there. And I'm going to spin this round again and pretty will do the same thing here. Um, especially with these fuse holders because the wire is already crimped in there. There's um, not a lot of chance to get it redo it if you get it short. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure, actually, these are just a crimp connector, like they clamp over the top in one go. <clears throat> now, there's a couple of different ways you can do these, and I'm going to bring my camera angle up a bit. Um, you can run a knife blade around these and just trip them off, or there is also a, um, a special, like, coax tripping tool that you can use, which I have. But these are deadly sharp little cutters, and if I squeeze them with just the right amount of pressure, they should just chop all the way through this wire, and it might not fit into my automatic stripper. It won't. So from here, I think I can just give it a bit of a, a bit of a force on the wrist. No, I think it's going to be the knife trick. Let's grab my trusty Leatherman, and we'll use our smooth-edged blade, and we will find get this in a nice position nice and flat and I'm going to use the wire to roll the blade across like so and I can hear that moving the uh, conductors inside so let's strip this off that's much better all right I'll give that immediately a quick little twist and these guys can twist on there um, I'm going to use that as a solder cup uh, contrary to normal and correct usage where you would crimp it. But let's give this all a nice little run here as well. Alright. Should be good here. And that should whiz right off. Alright. That's good. And this is uh, already tinned copper too, so I don't necessarily need to tin this. It's very nice stuff. Alright. Now, you're probably wondering where the blue tack comes into, thing, into play. Well, these have a little vent in the end here, um, which makes it a bit of a problem when you want to use them as a solder cup. So blue tack, I know from my casting experiments, will hold up to some serious temperatures. In fact, it doesn't deform notably uh, under the pressure of uh, molten brass even. So we're going to sit this up nicely, and I'm going to get a gas torch here. Uh, yes, here we go. I've got my Mr. Stoner Torch Green. I've got several of these. And we're going to get it nice and hot and get some solder in there. And we'll use the soldering iron to help out. We'll turn on our extraction fan as well. And it's a bit cool in here at the moment, so I have the sniffles a bit. I don't have coronavirus. Don't freak out, guys. And yes, tests have been performed on family members in this household. So there we go, now we're starting to get hot enough to melt in here. And we're going to need a lot of this stuff. Oh. Alright. This has got to get quite hot in here. There we go, this is good. A lot of solder going in there. Should be able to drop this guy right in. Looking good. Right. Now, while it's still hot, I'm going to feed a little bit more in the side here. I think it's already cooled down enough. All right, we'll let this cool off and we'll cut this short and we'll go back to when we've got it finished or maybe the next one. I don't know, it's late at night. Uh, my brain's not working right. Anyway, back in a minute. Alright, so now we've just used a cold piece of blue tack to just um, dab around here and pick off all the excess. And we can see from the end here it did indeed uh, go all the way through. Probably not quite as much in the base as I'd like, but it is certainly on there solidly. Um, I'm going to do a quick little touch up here just for cosmetic effect. Um, we're going to sit this across the top here. It's hard to position this in such a way that we can see what's going on. Um, but I'm going to use my good soldering iron here. I'm going to tin the end a little bit and give it a clean off in the steel wool. And uh, we're just going to get this little tip here. And I'm going to seal this over here so that we don't get any moisture ingress in there if there's any sort of inclusions. Um, one of the uh, bigger concerns I have is because this is going on an amphibious vehicle it might get wet and um, yeah 
terminations corrode and little things like this can sometimes stack up to being a life-threatening situation and it's just a little problem like this which is there's just not enough thermal mass in that iron to do this properly so let's get this one in here nice and hot sorry if my hands in the way guys but we're going to try and wick a bit of this in here and this flux core sold is really nice for this usually We'll let that cool off. I might go out to the workshop later on and get the bigger iron on that. That looks really messy now, so so much for cosmetics. Now we're going to get this one hot, and then we're going to sink our um, we're going to sink our other lead into that end. So let's rip all that off. Let's prep out the other end here, get it nice and ready to go, so we don't have a, a strand. Now we're going to heat this one, we're going to put quite a bit more in it and sink it in, but we'll be back once I've done that, because if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Alright, so, we've got, oh, that is still quite hot, I didn't wait long enough. Alright, we managed to seal up the ends here, and make them look a little neater than they were previously. Um, that's not too bad, and this is, I can hear the conductor squeaking away in that. Um, Alright. We need to find these need to go away. There's a big hunk of solder buried in that bit of wire in that blue tack, but that's all right. Um, multiple sclerosis is a fun thing to have, particularly when you get brain lesions, you tend to be a little less on the ball. Now, oh, <laughs> I've only for the first time ever just seen that there are actually markings on this even though I looked them all up. Um, so, that's motor forward, motor reverse. Um, now, what have we got? That's a battery positive, which is what we want, and that big spring wash is in the way. So let's see if I can get this off. I should really use a spanner for this, and I've probably got a set of ratchet spanners somewhere nearby, but I'm lazy. All right, let's take this off. So this is going to go to the battery, we're going to do that. You know what, I reckon that could stand to have a bit of heat shrink over that. We might do that first. Right, I found some heat shrink and I trimmed it. It's green and not red, but you know, it needs to insulate rather than look pretty. I think the bright red wire probably gives away that it's a positive lead. That and it'll be connected to the big fat positive junction right at the front of the Argo. And that'll just stop accidental shorts across the terminals, which could be a bit catastrophic for the fuse. So let's um, position this in here as well. Heat shrink is a bit of an art if you've never done it before. You've got to keep the heat moving, especially when using such a hot flame like this. You want to sort of bake it rather than burn it to pieces. Right, now let's keep the hot bit away from my arm. We want all these to come out in the same direction. Here. Now, um, ew, that's right, we have this guy needs to go in here too. Um, and he is certainly not the right diameter. I think he might get soldered onto the back of that terminal. I think that's how I'm going to resolve that issue and probably with the negative as well. But let's let's get this happening here. And we will be able to get the forward and reverse connections probably the right way around, although it won't make a lot of difference because I don't know which way the winch is gonna go. <laughs> because this has just got motor forward and reverse and motor has positive and negative so I don't really know. Now that's on quite sturdy. So I think we're going to take our hot wire here and I'm going to trim this terminal a little bit. Oh, no, actually, that might even be fine like that. If you can see what I'm planning, you can't. So I'm planning on soldering this right here. So let's turn on our exhaust fan and get some solder. And our soldering iron is still nice and hot. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get away with doing this. 
I'm probably not. Because again, little soldering iron does not have enough thermal mass for the job. So I guess it'll be gas torch, it is, and I'll probably roast some of that heat shrink by the time we're done. Anyway, give me a few moments. Alright, so I needed three hands for this bit, which is why we did it off camera, but I have my extra terminal soldered in the top there, although it doesn't look real pretty, I can assure you it's on nice and firmly. Now that can go on the top, and we've secured a positive connection and power supply for both the solenoid and the remote control receiver. And again, I should probably be using a proper spanner for this. But care factor zero at this point. Um, until I slip off and get a pair of needle nose pliers across my hand. That is on quite firmly, that's not going anywhere. Alright. So now we need motor forward and reverse connected, so this guy's gonna go on here. I'm not gonna put them on too tight because they will need to be probably swapped around at some point depending on which way the winch goes. Um, so from here we have our antenna and our ground. Our ground is going to hang off this terminal, but uh, we're going to need to run that off our negative wire. Um, and for that I think I need to go chop some off the Argo. So we just snuck out the back for a minute and I trimmed a couple of bits of wire to length as well as the winch wires and we cut this stupid hunk of crap off. Inside this is kind of a mini solenoid like that, just with big heavy push buttons to move it across instead of a solenoid. Um, so anyway, we've cut all our excess wire off here. We now don't need that, that stupid hunk of crap. Alright, so now we have our main input cables so we can wire up our negative. And the terminals these come with are woefully small, so we're going to do this and we'll trim them off. It's ironically smaller than the cable we're using for the battery, so we might have to pull some witchcraft to get these in those terminals. But anyway, let's get set up for the next terminal. Now, luckily, these fit in my automatic strippers. And what we're going to do with these guys, is because the conductors are a bit thinner, we're going to drop them in and we're going to do the same solder cup method I've used for the others. And we're going to wedge these in like that. And that should make up a bit of that space. So, yep, and we're going to do that to both ends of both of these wires. So, uh, I'll get cracking and I'll strip all these out and get the terminals ready. Alright, so, I did a stunning job on these leads, even though this stuff's really hard to work with. I realized I don't need this one. I can throw that on the floor in disgust because the fuse wire is going to do its job for us. Um, now I did manage to hook up the negative one as well and hooked up our negative wire to the receiver from that. Um, I'm going to give that a quick little bend and hook it up to the bottom of the solenoid here. I'm going to do that off camera because again it's a three-handed job and I only have two hands. Alright, so uh, yeah, let's get that on. Alright, so it turns out these terminals are quite hard copper and bending them was just too much of a pain in the rear. So everything's going to get all zip tied up like this. But before we put zip ties on, we're going to test everything. So we have a couple of clips here. This one is apparently a negative, And this one is apparently a positive. Now we're going to feed it to 12.5 volts, which is apparently still connected to my blinds. Let's turn that on. Nothing has let out its magic smoke yet, so let's put power onto the remote and see what happens. Let's go forward. Alright, and let's go reverse. Alright. And we are pulling 3 amps nearly for that. And 2.9 amps in that direction. Slight disparity, but that's fine. It means it's going to work. I'm going to be pulling a lot more amps than that when I'm running my winch, but it should be alright, we'll get us out of trouble. So, I'm hoping a 1500 pound winch doesn't pull more than 50 amps, if it does I'm going to need a bigger fuse. In the meantime, um, I might put a single zip tie around this, 
uh, and then I'll position everything a little bit more accurately once it's actually in the Argo. But we'll try and get all this neatened up, and uh, then it'll be wait until morning when we go out and do the rest. Right, so this is the winter solenoid for now, and it's set up in such a way that if I need to flip forward and reverse directions, I can flip them easily so that the remote control wording corresponds to the direction of the winch. <sighs> it's now getting on in the night and I'm getting tired, so a little piggy tail antenna here. So I think I'm going to call it a night and we're going to tackle the rest probably sometime tomorrow. Depending on who shows up at my door, I wonder. Even though it's locked down and people aren't meant to be doing that. So I've been turning a few people away, but it could be posty like usual. Anyway, um, yeah, let's see what happens. All right, so it's the next morning and I forgot a step. I was gonna add this switch in here so I can isolate the winch on and off. But I had realized I have an isolation switch already in the thing and the remotes are pretty fail safe with this um, raised lip around the on off button and the delay and everything like that. So I think it's probably actually pretty safe to have this just directly connected as is. Um, and I did actually have another project in mind for the Argo, which was um, using one of those little rain sensor kits for an Arduino, putting it down in the bottom so that when I start to take on a bit of water, I can have the buzzer go off. And uh, this might function for turning that buzzer on and off, or a host of other little accessories that I plan to put on there. So I think I'm just going to leave it as is. I think it'll be perfectly fine. Um, I can always pull the fuse if I'm really desperate. <coughs> I'll just leave that somewhere where it's accessible. Alright, let's head outside. Well, we're outside. Now, first order of duty. Well, this is, according to the manual, where I hook up the positive wire for the winch. And I think it's the main positive back to the battery as well. Um, which would explain why fuse is important. So I think we're going to start with that one. I'm going to take my nice little Barco ratchet spanners here, and I think they're usually a 13mm. Um, usually that for these terminals. No, we're a bit bigger, so let's try 14. Using that side. I love these things. They've got four different sizes on each spanner. Alright. I'll take that off carefully. I'm not sure this little protective boot, I'm not sure how much that's actually doing, but you know what, I know better than to remove it, I'll just leave it there. Um, now this bit is going to really hang down in here anyway, so, um, actually we want to be able to put that boot back on, so I think I might actually thread it back in through the boot, if there's room. This is where things get awkward. A stupid crimp terminal in there that is in the way. Yep. All right. And we're in. Not like Flynn, they say, but I've got to maneuver this around to fit on that terminal. This Argo is just low enough down that it's real pain. Alright, that I think is on. If I can get a couple of threads of the screw on, we should be right. But I want to get this spring washer on as well. Alright, at this point it's cold enough that my fingers have just gone numb, which is not going to help the situation at all. And all these heavy cables all have, they've all trained themselves to go in a particular direction. might be enough. I know this is a long cut guys but I'm only one person. I can't I don't have three hands. Alright we've got a couple of threads of that on. We'll take our 14 um, and flip you in the opposite direction. Oh, I'm gonna bend down 
back is killing me. Is that spring washer? I don't want to do this up too tight, but I don't want to do it up too loose as well. All right. I guess that's going to dictate mostly where the solenoid goes now. There's a nice mounting point for it down there. Um, now we can't run this around the other side because of the heat shield, so we're going to run it around this side and up to the main negative terminal here, which is a bit of a nightmare to get to. Uh, I'm going to have to do some thinking. We'll find a good spot to put the negative to, which you can probably see from here. Uh, where are we? Our main negative comes in right here, and this needs to go to it somehow. Uh, and it's worth noting I have turned the battery isolator off. Um, well, that's the main engine negative. I guess I could piggyback off the engine terminal. There's a lot hanging off that though. But it is a whole lot more accessible than everything else. And uh, I might follow the battery terminal back and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've switched over to the other side of the Argo. And um, I followed the main negative back. And it comes to the engine first. And then hoiks up here up to the, that negative rail. So the most sensible place of least resistance to go is straight back to that engine bolt. And uh, we've run our cable up along and underneath here, and we'll zip that down. Um, but at this point, I think it's time to test things. So we'll turn the battery isolator on, and uh, we'll test it. So let's come back over here, turn our battery isolator on, and we'll bring out one of our controllers. Now, we are already, we do have a little bit of slack just so I don't wind it in the wrong direction. So let's turn this on. Let's go extend. Okay. Ah, <laughs> I'm smart. I haven't actually connected the winch to the uh, solenoid yet, but I did hear the solenoid click. So that's a positive or a negative. I don't know. I've got to work out which polarity to put them on. So let's get them hooked up. Now, the manual calls to put an Anderson plug here and then drill holes and put the cables through there. Um, I don't like the idea of an Anderson plug getting wet on the outside. And this is a removable mount. So for me, I found that actually the bonnet closes just fine with the leads running under here. Um, I'm probably just going to leave it that way, actually. Because um, I, I just don't like drilling holes in this thing when I really don't have to. So I think for the short term, I'm going to leave the leads just hanging under the bonnet. If it presents a problem later on, I can always drill the holes in here, chop the connectors and put them back on. And speaking of chopping connectors, I need to put a couple of new ones on here. So I'm going to go and get my kit and bring it out here and put a couple of connectors on. Alright, so I was one piece of heat shrink away from being done with this winch project. And I dropped my lighter in the engine bay. I think I can see it. I got it easily enough this time, but that firewall is something I really begrudge having to remove. However, I do have to change gearbox oil anyway, so while it's out, I might suck the oil out, and then I'll pull this drain plug out and then do all of that, because we're up to our 25 hours of runtime, or 20 hours, so a gearbox needs its very first oil change. Alright, let's get finished with this winch. Let's get back to heat shrink and I'll move the lighter out of the way this time. Um, this terminal set a little bit, um, it's set a little bit quickly uh, because it didn't preheat the wire so it's hanging out a little further than I would normally like it to be but the connection is solid nonetheless. So. Get this guy in. I'm just heat shrinking everything here, just I don't know, seems like the right thing to do. 
you know, I know it's not great motivation to do anything. Now we have our terminals go on here. So let's work out what size this is. I'm going to bet a 12. No, it's a 13 like most things. So let's... No, 13 is that size. Actually, at some point I'll probably need to take the air cleaner off this thing and... Clean. Oh, that's, I've taken both terminals on this one. That's a pain. So I'm going to pop this right down and do the lower one up first and then see if we can remove the upper one. Come on, flip the other direction. Oh, I might have fun getting this off. Now I'm in trouble. There we go. I might need to get a shifter for that one. I'll be back. Alright, I, uh, I got the screw off. I had a little uh, issue with my uh, Leatherman here. I put it across these terminals and created a dead short. I wasn't sure that one of these is still actually technically connected at the time, so hopefully I haven't blown anything up. But uh, yeah, remember to turn the isolation switch off, guys. I'll hang that one out while we're here. So actually, that gives me an idea. If that one is live across there, then that one's probably negative. So let's put all this back on. And the uh, those of you with good hearing can probably hear the plovers going spastic in the background too. I think they've spotted a cat. Where are we? 13. Oh, that's the wrong way. That's the right way. Now, I have turned the isolation switch off again. I think I did that previously in an episode. I think that was when I was still installing the isolation switch. All right, that should be on firmly. Now, this guy is loose. Oh, my back is hurting. Aftermath of shifting concrete. Well, I didn't actually do any of the shifting because MS meant that Cutting a wheelbarrow is a bit of a challenge, but I supervised and agitated, and that was enough to do my back in. But where are we? 13, that's a fifth, 13, yeah, there we go. All right. Now, I'm probably going to need to get some liquid insulation tape and paint over them, but for now, I think everything's safe. I'm going to turn on the isolation switch and do a test. All right, let's turn on and see what happens here. Let's go retract. And it actually retracts. Let's go forwards. Oh, I may have blown something. So it's going reverse. That's all I've got. I'm going to swap them terminals over, but I may have blown up that solenoid. All right. All right, so solenoids back out again. Um, I did a bit of a video chat with my senior technician and um, yeah, we reckon the solenoid's faulty and was probably dead on arrival. It wasn't necessarily my short circuit. So he's gonna, we're gonna drop that off to him. He's gonna drill the rivets and have a look inside and see what the deal is. In the meantime, this winch project's gonna come to a grinding halt. So it might do an oil change on the gearbox. But anyway, I'm gonna call it quits because I need to go inside and have some breakfast. All right, so I've been scouring all over town today and I was about to buy $200 worth of horn relays when my buddy at JCAR came up with this. It's a nice heavy duty solenoid. The J-Car part number for this is SY4204. No, 4202. Anyway, this is basically the same thing. <clears throat> Just with a spade terminal uh, for one side of things. So, <clears throat> I'll have to hook the ground up to a common there. Uh, but that shouldn't be too hard. Otherwise, everything else should pretty well just screw into place. I hope that this one actually does what it's meant to do. So, 
I'm going to wire this up off camera so I don't screw anything up while I'm talking to the camera. All right, so it's wired to a temporary arrangement, uh, and this one doesn't have an internal link for common, so we've had to run this little common wire around here. And um, I'm not hooking the winch up yet, I'm just going to test to see if it fires or if it blows a fuse. So we should be pretty good. Um, this is like almost a kilogram of solenoid, it's a 100 amp solenoid, way overkill for what we need, but it's what we've got, and it's still cheaper than buying four horn relays. So, let's do a test run. Alright, so, um, we've got our battery isolator on. According to the diagram, this is how you wire it up. We're going to put our fuse in. Let's see what happens. No big arcs with the fuse in. Doing well. Let's arm our remote and see what happens. So, okay, it's working. That's a good relay. Alright. Now let's hook our winch up and see what happens. So it would appear that I never seem to learn. I put another chunk out of my spanner um, because it pushed and made contact through the heat shrink tubing here. So I'm going to need to put more of that on. Oh, sounds like the post is here too. I might have to go and tend to that. Now these terminals I'm hoping aren't going to make contact through the heat shrink but I'm going to push them out of the way just to make sure okay we'll definitely need some more heat shrink on that and we're going to go and put a couple things up here my apprentice is going to come and help so let's turn the isolator switch back on and hope I haven't blown up another um, solenoid Right, test time. Let's see. All right. We've got in and out happening. Okay. All right. It works. Yay! Finally. All right. Finally. Turn now we can actually start zip tying things down. Yes. One last little thing I'm doing. Bit of additional heat shrink uh, where the heat shrink broke away. Just double layer that just to avoid any further mistakes. All right, things are mostly positioned. Because this is such a huge um, solenoid, I've had to put that down here. The holes, mounting holes don't line up, so I've put one through and a couple of big fat zip ties further down. Everything else is all sort of zip tied in place. Hopefully that won't eventually bust off. Um, I got word back from my uh, senior technician. He said that solenoid had never been assembled properly in the first place, and that's why it wasn't working. So he's fixed that. So I now have a spare. But yeah, I'll be certainly leaving some feedback on uh, eBay about that one. Anyway, um, I have a trailer to move. And I've also realised that the concrete has concreted my gate in place. So I can't open that either. So I'm going to have to chip that out of the way before I can move this to go and move my trailer. Hole in the bucket, dear Liza. If you know that poem, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to pack up some of this stuff first and uh, get this area cleaned up. All right, so winch is all in and buttoned up. The bonnet's down and latched. Um, everything's sorted except the firewall is out because I'm going to change the, uh, the oil in this, which probably means I'm not going to use it barefoot. Um, but I think this should protect my feet from the chains well enough. Uh, let's see if we can move this trailer.
Okay, well, we've got the Argo back under cover. We've got the trailer out of the quagmire that is the front yard. And everything has all been chewed up by Earthworks vehicles and everything lately, so it could take a while for that grass to recover. And so we'll see how we go. All right, well, we're back in the desk where this all started. Um, there's not much more to add to this video. We got the winch done. I'm not going to do the oil change in this video uh, like I mentioned I might. I am just too tired now. In fact, I've ended up paying somebody else to clean the driveway like I should have done because I just have no energy left. So, um, yeah, anyway, well, at least we'll spread some of this coronavirus stimulus around the local people anyway, uh, give them something to do. But that's also why I'm inside and not out there. Social distancing and hygiene control and all. So uh, I'm finishing off this video on the inside. So yeah, hopefully uh, my yard recovers soon. Um, and there'll be some more Argo stuff. I think the next Argo adventure is probably going to be the gearbox oil change. Which I don't expect is going to be too terribly difficult. Um, anyway, I'll find something else to pad out that episode anyhow. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.